glories of things you have seen, of the saints of the dawns up in old Aberdeen. But in all this wide world there's but one thing for me, it's the bold boy to wear the dark blue dandy. 1962, the most famous year of all in a century of roller coaster history at Dance Park. Dundee are champions of Scotland and about to embark on a journey into the European Cup, which was to take them all the way to the semi final. They had some side, genuine legends of Scottish football like Alan Gulzin, who had the glorious ability to stay cool when the heat was on. And Dundee's starting another attack. Here's number six, Bobby Wisher. A lovely through ball, and it's the inside left number t 10, Alan Gilzean. A lovely pass, and then Waddle with another goal. And that's the sort of goal that Gilzean, the club's top scorer, also lays on to his colleague. I played with five forwards, and uh, to me, it was always important to score goals. That's what spectators come to see. Where now the game has gone much more defensively minded and where you've got six or seven def four, uh, defenders rather against one or two forwards. So the forwards, the forwards lots are much, much harder now. But do you not think that if you could if you get something in a time machine, you could bring your lot back to Dens <laughs> Park? You'd be filling this ground. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know about that because uh, football crowds in general have gone down. I think our average gate when we won the championship here was 17 and a half thousand. But Gilly was well aware that great teams need great managers, and Dundee had a unique character in Bob Shankly, who knew that his stars would soon be in demand in England. Oh, obviously they'll be interested, and they must be interested, because as, as you know now, that we're, we're, we're known in the continent, and they're pretty well known at home, of course, now too. But these are things that we'll, we'll attend to when the time comes. He was a very honest man, Bob Shankly. If he promised you something, you were sure of getting it. And the spade was a spade with him, like he didn't mess about. He, he knew what he wanted on the part, and if he didn't supply it, obviously he weren't in the team. You can feel the history of it all in the boardroom at Dens Park, but you can't help wondering if we'll ever see their likes again. It was some day back in the spring of 62 when they clinched the title at St Johnson's Old Ground at Newton. Happy days and memories which will never fade on Tayside. First it was glory at home, and then in a fabulous European Cup run the following season, which saw them go past Cologne, Anderlecht and Sporting Lisbon, only to fall to AC Milan in the semi-final. Pull back Alex Hamilton, 33 times cap for Scotland, remembers that win over Anderlecht in Belgium. We got a hell of a good result over there, like, you know, and in view of the fact that we're playing away from home in the first round, like, you know, um, we played it very, very tight at the back, and with guys like Big Gilzean, Penman and Cousins up front, you're always liable to score something in that. And we managed to knock four in there then, so that was a, that was a good result, wasn't it? Taken by the left half, Wisher. Those are the ones that Anderlecht don't like, and it's going to be four! It is! guy and he would sit around the piano, Hugh Robertson would play the guitar and the lads would have a sing song. So the hamsters originated on training camps at uh, Creef and at Pitlochry. We decided we'd put a wee group together so we picked four guys that could sing in one dummy like you know and that was Brun, you know, Craig Brun. Um, and we managed to get a wee record put together as you probably well know. It took the guy two days to get us on sound through in Edinburgh like you know. So I think at the end of the day Murdy Wallace threatened he'd spent enough money in it. They couldn't have put too many records in because there was a great big demand for them. I think it sold ten like it. <laughs> but the real music to the ears of the Dundee fans was the roar of the crowd as they watched their team in action. Charlie Cook, Gordon Smith, Seif, Ewer and Wishart. To watch them play was to see poetry in motion. We pray we see their likes again in Dundee's second century.